You are listening to the number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. Now, in today's episode, we answer fitness and health questions. We actually answer four of them that are asked by our audience. But the way we open the episode is by talking about our sponsors. We talk about what we did this weekend. We have tell fun stories, talk about studies. So let me give you a rundown of today's episode. We open up by talking about the keto bundle from ButcherBox. Uh, as opposed to their, I don't know, yeah. carb bundle. Yeah, where's that All one? they sell is meat. But anyway, this <laughs> is a crazy uh, bundle. So here's the deal. Uh, sign up at butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump. You can get up to 10 pounds of high quality meat, which is a pork butt, bone in, chicken thighs, and ground beef, free in your first box. This Ten offer pounds. This offer is valid to the 18th of this month. This is a, probably the biggest promotion uh, I can think of that they've had. Uh, that led us to talk about our diet and our workouts. All of us are super motivated, having a great time working out together. We're all trying to eat a little differently to change our body composition, so we talk about that. We're getting huge. Then I brought up studies talking about the difference between men and women and how they respond to intensity versus volume. It's kind of interesting. No, we're uh, the same cell. I brought up the, uh, the the plan that NASA has in case an asteroid is coming towards Earth. You know, I wouldn't uh, put it past uh, 2021 if it's going to outdo 2020. Hey, yeah, we'll see what happens. For an asteroid. Then I talked about the kid who got kicked out of school for holding a rave in the bathroom. Good for you. Uh, Adam and I talk about our baby boys give a little update on what they're up to. I talk about a new supplement from Organifi called Harmony for women. One compound in there, Boost Libido. So guys, uh, there you go. Yeah, pay attention, fellas. Go check them out, Organifi.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump. You'll get 20% off Harmony and any other product that they offer. Uh, then I talked about how we walked to the mall holding the baby. Big miscalculation on time and distance there. So it was a tough one. Then we got into answering the questions. Here's the first one. This person wants to know if we have any tips or advice for deadlifting with dumbbells instead of barbells. The next question, this person wants to know what we think about the 75 hard challenge that's going around right now on the internet. Hard. The next one, this person wants to know what are good starter exercises to develop explosive power. And then the final question, this person wants to know how you can tell the difference between hip and foot instability. Also, uh, this month, we have uh, all month long a new promotion 50% off a starter bundle. Starter bundle is great for those of you getting started with your fitness. So if you haven't worked out for a few months, this is phenomenal. The bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Prime, the Intuitive Nutrition Guide, and then, of course, we threw in for free MAPS Starter. So if you follow this, this is the order. You go MAPS Starter to MAPS Anabolic and you use Prime the whole time to prime your body. And, of course, the Nutrition Guide helps you with your diet habits. Now, this whole bundle, if you were to get it normally at retail, would be $340. Right now, $80. This is a huge promotion. Again, it's lifetime access, and it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go check it out. Go to mapsjanuary.com. That's the word maps, M-A-P-S, january.com. Doug, what was that movie you and I watched up in Truckee? The, or Broke the, Back Mountain? Yeah. Together. Not, no, With yeah. popcorn. Yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> In a hole cut Before out. you guys went hiking? Yeah, it's right. <laughs> <laughs> Not that one. Remember when you guys were limping back on yeah. that? Oh, oh, my man. God. Did you get hurt? There's, there's what was there? Something in the bushes. What was that? What was that? The one where the, the chick cuts the dude's face off. Whoa, my oh, God. Hey. Hunter, Hunter. Yes, Hunter, like Hunter. Yeah. Did you that see that weird. yet? What? I don't want why. What did she cut it his face off It got great review. It was like a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes or something. Yeah, something high. Why did like she that? cut the guy's face off? Well, well that's kind of a spoiler. Yeah, I'm not going to ruin that. Ruin why. <laughs> well, you kind of already did. <laughs> it's like what it all builds up to is <laughs> dude's face gets cut off. Yeah, it was just, well, I was not expecting that. It he, was not, he promised her head. She, he never delivered. So she's like, oh, I'll get it. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> One way or another. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I'm on fire today. Yes, you is. are. Yeah. Hey, well, speaking of meat, you know, I got an email from our <laughs> <laughs> One of our our sponsors right so butcher box is by far one of our, our favorite companies that we work with and you know they, they're all what i love is they're always rotating promotions and so the you know the most current thing for us to talk about uh for them is this keto bundle they give us wait wait uh, wait, wait keto bundle yeah from <laughs> as opposed to their high carb well, option. That, that's exactly <laughs> that's exactly where i'm going with this yeah, i was like the carb at, at first i was like oh that's cool that's a really clever idea they should do that right and then i'm like wait a second everything yeah. they have is meat yeah what is not keto that they <laughs> i mean it got people's attention <laughs> hold, hold on doug's pulling it up yeah what what's wow that is crazy so here's what you get in the keto bundle you get up to 10 pounds of high quality meat so pork butt bone in chicken thighs and ground beef 
free in your first box. Mm. Oh, wow. You know, Holy shit. like that pork butt. Well, I was just yeah. going to say, oh, yeah. if Justin was a meat, yeah. which one would he be? I mean, that's pretty accurate. He's the pork butt. Yeah, he eats yeah. a lot of butt. So yeah. I love you now. I haven't tried the pork butt, actually. Yeah. Is it good? Yeah. <laughs> Doug, don't don't wipe your face. Like it was that. too much. Oh, too much Lord. for Doug. <laughs> this this intro's already gotten off to a great start. Hey, no, 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 seriously. Have you guys tried the pork butt? Because I haven't yet. No, I, I, Doug. I, I think Doug cooks it a lot, right? I have, and I, actually, Courtney is always making that up in uh, Truckee. Yeah. Oh, the I pulled had that. pork. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's yeah. what it's from. Yeah. And you do that in the pressure cooker. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I gotta do. Did that. she make that the last time we were up there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your was voice I, went up I real mi- high there. Right? Did I miss? The- oh, that was the day I missed when I went over to see uh, Tom and my sister. Oh huh? uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, sometimes she does it with liquid smoke, or she'll do it like with barbecue sauce. So, oh, yeah, that either way, it's good. Amazing. Delicious. Now, okay, so both you two right now uh, are what's what's diet looking like at home? So now we're we're, we're rolling right now. We're beyond a month, right? Or at least mm-hmm. I'm coming. at You guys are both ahead of me. Mm-hmm. I'm at the one month mark. Right. He always now. wants to be the underdog. By the way, I do. I, I do. Right? I do better yeah. that yeah. way for sure. <laughs> Just so everybody knows. Paints okay. the picture. Just so everybody knows what time it is. I'm a couple <laughs> weeks behind these guys yeah. right now. So, yeah. So what's uh, what's wife cooking right now? Does she change the menu for you right now? Or do you just uh, go from like a, a block of cheese a day to like a half a block of cheese a day? That's all you do. <laughs> I love do. that you guys paint that picture of my, mm, my diet. Yeah. It's, it's good. It's almost accurate. I was going to say, I don't think yeah, it's <laughs> not very far off. No, I, I do uh, eat a lot of meat, obviously. That's one of those things, though, that, uh, you know, we've been just making that more of the centerpiece. And like, I... I, I really haven't like strayed too far. It's pretty boring. I'll just do meat and then any carb that we put in there is going to be rice or potatoes. It's like, that's like our two options. So whatever you like, like we assemble that together to make. Uh, so is nothing really changed then for you or is this different or is anything different right no, now? No, just the amount of calories I'm consuming is that's greater. It. That's- so, oh, so you bumping calories. I've been bumping calories. Yeah. Uh, mainly, like I said, in the morning. Uh, and then also I've added um, whey protein uh, shake before I, I start driving over here to work. What the too. hell's going on? It's like opposite land. You look yeah. leaner because you've added calories. Well, I don't know. I guess I'm just more, I'm, I'm more, honestly, I'm like way more active right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. And like this whole weekend was like a testament to that. Like I, I seriously don't even sit down anymore. I'm just like running around doing a million things and uh, being productive. So oh, you I went can't to, complain. You went to Sanctuary this weekend too, right? Yeah. How did you like that? Oh, my, that place is amazing, dude. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had no idea. It's kind of funny because, um, you know, there's part of me that doesn't really like to get pampered you know i have a hard time with it like i was like you know they drive you to your your place and everything and all this uh and so like i i don't know bellman and all that i'm like uncomfortable with all that kind of stuff uh so like he's like unloading all these things into what do i do do i hug him yeah what do i do do i I, high five him do i kiss him or do i give him a five dollar tip what do i do right here exactly all these things were running through my head and so he's like unloading all of our stuff and we brought the dogs with us so we had a bunch of stuff but then there was like this one thing that courtney was bringing back for uh to exchange for a present for ethan that just didn't go well it was like this big lego thing that we got for him and so it was a box of that and so he goes and he grabs it and he's like putting it in and we're like oh i'm like oh no 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 that's you know that's not for for this and he's like, he's like i don't know what you guys are into or anything but i was like, <laughs> I was like oh yeah that's our thing dude. we just like build legos together when we get a moment's time you know alone like we just you know we I get just, romantic he's like, you legos. either buy one sex toy or yeah. you get a box of legos and that's it's right. a lot of different build their own <laughs> sex toys and you just invent that's what you. We do. i just envisioned justin like the bellman at waiting there for a tip and justin slaps him when they ask for like a good game yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. way to go good, 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 <laughs> good, good game yeah. guys supinate your curls at the top you'll get a better peak yeah no it was amazing yeah, with a fitness tip yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly dude waking up to waves crashing like that yeah, and everything it's like you can't beat that dude no. it, it was funny though because like this this uh girl was out there uh kind of setting up and like was 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 out there first thing in the morning and like she was like very possessive of the area it was like where all the the chairs were and everything she was kind of like looking around all the time and so me and courtney were sitting there watching the waves drinking coffee and we're trying to like speculate like who is this lady like this crazy lady that is like occupying all this and like trying to set up for like some party she's gonna have there so she's like and then she takes out these blocks that are all color and she's like throwing them in certain it's spots yoga. outdoor yoga yeah 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 but we didn't get to that uh, conclusion until it started <laughs> happening so we're making all these scenarios for her and she was just setting up her yoga class but i thought she was just some psychotic you know <laughs> crazy karen lady she's doing <laughs> some beach prayer or yeah it's just like this is my spot and yeah i'm like how yeah. can you claim all this purple block is mine yes this Red is, block mine. is mine you're over here did anybody show up for it uh yeah actually there was like four 
four ladies that showed up. Yeah, dude, yeah. I love uh, stretching on the beach. I love it. It's a perfect spot for it, man. You get a great view there. It's the only time I like stretching. Yeah. Is that, yeah. <laughs> oh. uh, no, uh, diet for me, uh, also working in the opposite. I have reduced, or I think reduced my calories and gaining weight. I don't know how this is happening to me. It's very strange. <laughs> hmm. I weighed myself yesterday. I was like, oh, it went up. Yeah. What the fuck? We're, I think we're an opposite. Oh, well, way. I think we're just not. We're not moving very much, right dude. Now I'm. I'm really uh, under. Exactly. I've overestimated how many calories I think I'm burning because, yeah. aside from the the one hour workout I do in the morning, the rest of the day is no activity. Hmm. I'm not moving. You know. Yeah. I mean, I'm going on walks here and there, but it's just it's just not much. So I need to either bump it up or cut my food down even more. Yeah. You know. Now, what is it, what is each of your strategies right now? Like, do you guys have a focus? Like, what you're doing? Like, as far as building right now? Like, right now, Justin, like, resist that without all costs. Right? He's not. <laughs> he's not trying to do anything aesthetically. But what? What? What is? It, what's the game plan right now? Or do you even have one? You just kind of. I usually do it. it in phases. So mm -hmm. I'll uh, first reduce and then lim eliminate processed foods. Mm -hmm. uh, not eating out as much. So right now I'm not eating out as much as all at all. Then I'll start to cut down on breakfast. Then the next meal will be lunch, and then eventually dinner. And then the final thing I tend to reduce is the weekends. And that's usually the way I scale things. I don't like to go all in all at once. It just it doesn't feel right when I do it that way. Yeah, I've been trying to really be reasonable about um, you know not just going all in on the intensity, uh, even though I want to. I'm starting to feel really good and feel energetic, and uh, you know have a propensity then to like really get crazy in the workouts. And so I've been like. I've been trying to be a little more reserved with that because I I do feel like like certain aches, pains, and joints like will come up, and then I'm like the next workout I'm trying to to you know be mindful of that. Uh, but honestly, I'm I'm just trying to be consistent and and keep enjoying what I'm doing, and uh, you know slowly reduce like the kind of. Uh, garbage food that like makes its way in and like reduce the amount of alcohol like I've been drinking and so it's like really much of a slow scale for me of uh, trying to get my way to then now I'll put more intensity maybe in a month or two uh, towards really dieting down. Yeah, what now, about you, Adam? Did you start by what cutting out candy? <laughs> no, I actually I haven't had candy in a long time. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, no, we've I've definitely changed a lot right now. So um, like you, Sal, I I eat out quite a bit. So we're prepping again, right? So we're and we're not actually at a point where we're we're doing like a big prep on Sundays. Like when I when I get really dialed in, I'll start uh, meal prepping on one weekend day for the entire week. Um, but we are meal prepping in the sense that we are eating more meals uh, from home than we are uh, eating out. So we're you know using the Instant Pot and and you know kind of cooking in bulk. So I have meals mm -hmm. that are ready for me. Um, that's probably the big thing. Uh, and then adding, right? So, you know, for me, I, what I'm notorious for is when I get to this place where I'm not really paying attention, tracking food, and I'm not really trying to change my physique and I just kind of eat when I'm hungry. I actually, you know, real quickly, I will only eat once to twice a day and grossly under eat protein and, you know, muscle falls off my body and I tend to put on body fat. That's kind of like my MO. And so the first major switch for me is just making sure that I'm getting that protein in is, uh, and it starts by getting up and having a breakfast early, which is what I normally wouldn't be doing. I normally would wait till one, two o'clock in the afternoon to have my first meal. So by now I'm, <clears throat> I'm probably going to have two meals to three meals by that time. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm ahead of my protein targets. Um, and then just really cutting out the fast food stuff, right? So I'm not doing anything like not that I would eat fast food, but just having delivery food like DoorDash to my house all the time, right? Just so I can control, you know, I can control what's coming in. But I'm not even tracking it. So I'm one month in, there's no tracking it like I normally would do with steps. There's no tracking of, you know, calories burned. There's no tracking of intake. I'm just making better choices, making sure I hit my protein intake. So food is, you know, food is kicking up. At least food that I make is kicking up. And then consistent with training. I haven't been this consistent with lifting as far as how many days per week now uh, for a long time since uh, since for sure after after competing after competing in the torn Achilles, uh, I would say you know a good week I would hit you know three four times a week of training where you know I'm I'm training six days a week. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, consistently mm. right now. You know, and you know you say that like that right, and I, I do. I have this. I definitely flipped a switch once I've decided like, okay, I'm, I'm all in, I'm going to, I'm going to transform my body right now. Um, but the difference now at almost 40 compared to 22 is a switch gets flipped, but I, I do, I don't 
allow that to drive my intensity and uh, obsession with like a little how, smarter. Yeah, much smarter, slower approach. Like uh, you know, just this last week, I definitely. You know, I, you guys are a little ahead of me, so I see you guys moving more weight than I'm moving right now. And so there's the the ego inside of me wants to like, oh, stack on some more weight. And, you know, I was I bailed on 315 on squats uh, this weekend. I was really frustrated, frustrated because I, I feel weak. I don't feel that strong yet. And as I should, I mean, I've barely been consistently training right now. And now my hips are talking to me, you know, and I know better. Like, and they don't lie. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, uh, you know, and so I'm still guilty of overreaching and doing stupid shit like that, but I'm, I'm much quicker to reel it in. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, already this week I've adjusted and said, okay, like, you know, more mobility will be involved this week. Um, I won't go super heavy, bump the reps up on things. There's, it's so mental, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. If, you know what the challenge for me is that when I go from being heavier to trying to get leaner is I like being strong. Mm -hmm. So I hate seeing the, I, like I, I can get addicted yeah. to the strength. And what happens when you get leaner, um, especially if you've been working out for a long time, is you tend to lose some strength on the bar. And that makes it, it's a mental game. It's such a mental game. Like this weekend, I, you know, I did, uh, I was at home squatting on Saturday. And I squatted four plates. I haven't squatted that in a long time. Now, granted, I don't have the mobility to go ass to grass, but it was a it was an okay squat. It was decent. Still, I haven't loaded the bar with four plates in a long time. Yeah. And so it's hard for me to like start to reduce my weight and then watch that come down at the same time. I know it has to happen. I don't think I'll be able to maintain oh. that kind of strength by cutting. But it's such a mental game. It's like I have to mentally, I have to completely forget about the weight that I'm lifting, and it's all about aesthetics. Otherwise. I end up staying the same because like, oh, I get a little weaker, bump up calories. Oh, I'm not losing weight, cut the calories. This back and forth, I end up staying the same place. There's mm -hmm. also this side that, you know, and I, I didn't really fully understand this until competing is you're, when you're in a deficit and you're trying to lose, you're trying to cut, your your glycogen levels are depleted. Too. You're just not going to be as strong. You're not only going to be not strong because you're you're depleted there, but you're also going to look flat and smaller. At first, before you actually get lean, you just oh. look smaller. Oh yeah. yeah, you know it's like that in between yeah, phase of like sucks. a haircut. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like it just sucks. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. It's too early to get a haircut type of deal. It's the same concept as you're coming down. You know you're you're doing the right things by being in a caloric deficit, but what sucks is all of a sudden you see strength grow, and then when you don't have all that glycogen in those muscle bellies. They look smaller, so you'll look like all of a sudden out of nowhere you've lost kind of muscle, and the the way your physique looks in that transition sometimes. And and I remember before competing, right when it mattered, and I had to get on stage and present a lean physique. What would happen to me as a kid <clears throat> or a young a young adult training like this is I would see my strength go down, I would see my muscle bellies all flat, and then that would freak me out, and then I would reverse That's again. what I mean. And I yeah. could never stick through to yeah. see the cut all the way through because I would be playing these mental games going like, oh my God, like this sucks. I'm supposed to be getting leaner and, and looking better, but I'm looking worse mm -hmm. and I'm weaker. Forget that. Put I'd rather put the calories back in. I looked better last week than I did right now. And so I think a lot of people uh, go through that and maybe don't even realize that they're on the right track. They're doing the right things, but you're in this in between phase, and you mm -hmm. got to stay the course and trust the process. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. why you can't fall in love with one or the other. You go too extreme. Yeah. You know, if you fall in love with getting strong, you're going to push injuries. This is what's going to end up happening. You just keep pushing the weight, and if it's all about aesthetics, then you tend to over diet uh, or over train. <laughs> so you got to figure out how to go from one to the other. It's the transitioning for me that's always tough. But once I transition then I'm fine. And right now I'm like loving the strength. So I'm like, damn it. I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to lose that strength. Yeah. I feel you on that. I get, I could get addicted to strength, you know, when I'm, when I'm there and I'm like feeling like I'm going to be PRing and it's really hard to transition and be smart about that, you know? Uh, but, uh, you know, age does help. I think it's like now kind of like getting back into the rhythm of things. It's like, okay, that's my, that's the first thing I'm thinking of. And then mm -hmm. I'm trying to be, you know, conscious of that the whole way yeah. through. Speaking of resistance training, I've been reading a lot of, uh, these kind of studies on the differences between men and women and how they respond to resistance training. And um, there's a few studies that point to the fact that there may be some general difference. And again, as a trainer, so this is as a personal <laughs> trainer, um, these are interesting studies, but when I train someone, I always look at the individual. It really doesn't matter to me because what matters to me is how the individual is responding, whether they're male, female, beginner, intermediate, advanced, doesn't matter. But they are still fascinating. And so what some of these studies are showing is that men respond better to intensity and women may respond better to volume mm. when it comes to training. 
Um, too much intensity with women can cause uh, negative effects. And too much volume with men can cause the negative effects. So now, is there any sort of a bias there? Because that's kind of what naturally happens, anyways. As far as like, if you look at what people gravitate towards, no. Like, they're did looking, you read all the controls? Like what? Yeah, they're looking at just in terms. So that so they were examining uh, absolute muscle and strength gains, but they were also examining relative uh, strength and muscle gains. And relative is important because if you're dealing with let's say a 140 pound woman absolute strength and muscle gains are going to be much smaller than a man. But mm. if you compare, if you look at it from a relative standpoint, uh, because she's because she's so much smaller to begin with, then they can start to kind of figure things out a little bit. And so uh, when you look at it from that standpoint, the studies show that women tend to, again, do better by reducing intensity, increasing volume, and men mm. can respond better to this intensity. This reminds me of that conversation we had with that sports science guy. Mm. Uh, he was talking about like the advantages of like maybe... Uh, endurance sports versus uh, explosive sports. Uh, you know that women might actually have an advantage some in some aspects of for endurance. Well, yeah, but, I, what, yeah, but what about the bias of that? Like, uh, okay, in, at least in my experience as a trainer, um, uh, many, if not most, all of the female clients that I trained, most of them were grossly un under consuming. Mm. So if you're also grossly under consuming, you're not hitting your nutrient targets on a daily level, and then you also add an intensity training in there. I would think that would throw off your hormone levels more so than it would a man, especially since they're less susceptible well, to that. Well, yeah, and I don't know if they control for that. It's a very good point. Here's the other thing, too, um, like uh, fasting, skipping yeah, meals and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Men tend to be more resilient to the potential negatives of that, right. whereas women uh, right. also tend to not uh, tend to have some negative effects some issues, yeah. when they push it too hard. So it is interesting, something to pay attention to. But again, at the end of the day, if you know when you're listening to this information, don't just blindly apply, you know, apply it to yourself. Like if you're a man and you're listening to this, you're like, well, the study said that men <laughs> respond well to intensity, so I'm just going to hammer myself or vice yeah. versa. It's really what's important is the on an individual basis how you're responding. It really doesn't matter what these studies say when you're training yourself um, or if I'm training a client. I look at the person. How are they responding? What seems Because I've definitely trained women that do great with lower volume, higher intensity, mm -hmm. and vice versa. And there's always that range there. Mm -hmm. But it is fascinating, right? It is kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, and along those lines, I did stumble upon uh, studies that were just continue, uh. continue to show the benefits of resistance training. Um, some studies are now showing that actually may be more in comparison to cardio uh, on their own, resistance training seems to be better for heart health uh, than just cardiovascular training. You know, it's the best though, of course, mm. both. Oh, of yeah. course. Yeah, the studies show a little bit of both is probably the best uh, overall. But uh, but yeah, resistance training, it used to be cardio was the one for the heart, but they're showing that the that lifting weights uh, has more of a, a heart protective, uh, you know, health effects mm -hmm. uh, than just cardio. So, interesting. Yeah, yeah kind of interesting. Very cool. Um, uh, you guys want to take a left here real quick? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, I was, did you know that NASA has a plan for uh, asteroids? There's one coming. Have you heard of this plan, Justin? I probably have a long time ago, but uh, refresh it. Yeah, I'm a, so let me find it real quick. So apparently they have a uh, like a whole uh, well, step a step by step plan. Okay. To if they identify an asteroid is coming close to Earth, this is, is like, like the Air Force involved, like uh, actually Space Force now. No, it's kind of interesting. Okay, so number one, here's the first things that happen. They send out a message to 12 scientists. I don't know who these 12 scientists are. <laughs> the 12. Yeah, but there's 12. The Council of 12. There's, there's 12 scientists that NASA has deemed the emergency, like the people to hear, the first people to hear that there's an asteroid that may be colliding with the Earth at some point, right? So that's okay. number one. Number two, they get that. Then what they do is they track its path. Mm -hmm. Then they calculate the size and time of impact. Then they confirm with FEMA that it's inevitable. So they tell FEMA, hey, look, this is for sure going to happen. We've got our guys looking at our girls or whatever. throw nukes at it. Then they, no. Oh. Then they issue the public statement and then the public statement goes out. And then here are the things that they look at to potentially deflect an asteroid. So here are the ways. One are lasers. Yes. <laughs> lasers. Yes. Now, you know what the lasers are doing? Uh, no. They're not blowing it up with a laser. Oh, they're just like guiding it or like tilting it off its axis? Or so what? they're heating up one side. So, so it moves it just yeah, gradually. Yeah, it changes its trajectory. And if yeah. they could get it like far enough away, then they'll change the trajectory enough to How where How do it, we have a, an intense enough laser to do that? I have no idea. That's a good question. <laughs> and where? <laughs> are you in space well, shooting it with the laser? A million you, people with pen lasers. Are you up on the moon and like they have like some huge laser beam? How can you question that? We have lightsabers now, bro. 
I know. Did you see that? Yes. I, I showed him what? the. the you this, didn't know that? Bro. Oh, is this the guy that built it? He built it. Oh, oh pull it up. Literally dog. engineered you have to see it. This. My yes. son showed me this. Oh, yeah. you saw it? Yes. Bro, it this cuts is, like steel. It's like plasma or something? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It, just, yeah, it goes right through and melts. melts it's uh, so big and heavy, though, the thing he's got to on his back. I know. It's oh, dude, I mean, it's not quite there, but dude, it works. Yeah. It's. it's. My mind was blown. Just the one percent. Hey, I got so excited. Hey, dude, let me tell you. Someone breaks in your house, you pull out a lightsaber. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're not fucking with They're me. They're gone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, like, I'm trying I'm, to shoot. Me. I'm out of here. Here's a second thing that that another way they could deflect it: hitting it with a spacecraft, um, detonating a bomb next to it, and then here's another one: spacecraft orbiting around it. So anything that changes the, if they should change it just enough to where wow. it misses the Earth, yeah. That, so much better. How'd you like to be on that crew? Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> spin around the, the ultimate. Yeah, <laughs> spin around the thing. Yeah. So it, right. what, what happens if something like that hits us? Though, so do we like completely implode, or does it just take out what? The, I mean, it obviously decide, depends yeah, on the size, size right? Uh, oh, dude. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's catastrophic. Yeah, I mean, dude. Yeah, everybody I did see dies. This. My my son showed me this. So my my son apparently he watches this channel with this guy that builds all these different things. Look at that. Isn't that and how does it okay, so it has like some kind of rod that goes all the way up to determine how long it is. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, and then like the, the plasma heats. What if he drops it on himself? Is it some kind of <laughs> coil? Yeah, I didn't see the inner workings of it, but I just saw, dude, it just it literally is a lightsaber. I'm just I'm still baffled by it. Yeah, it's pretty fascinating. Yeah. Well, if he's got that, I wonder what the military has, huh? Oh yeah, right. Yeah, very, very, very interesting. Yeah, no, Adam. If it hits, if an asteroid that's what? like a mile wide, I think hits the Earth, um, then I think people within a certain vicinity are just vaporized, and then the rest of the Earth ch just goes. The, the temperature changes enough because yeah. of the we turn into Mars. The debris that flies up and deflects the sun like that, instantly, or is it like would it be like a gradual thing? I think instantly you have X amount of millions, hundreds of millions of people that die uh -huh. who are like, you know, like if it or Europe, right? Mm. All Europe, Eastern Europe, Middle East gone. And then countries on the other side of the earth will feel the impact, but still be alive. But then it'll get dark yeah. and then the plants will die. And then the animals that eat the plants will die. And then there you and go. You have to live underground or something. Yeah. And then we become So even, people, even the yeah, few like, thousand people yeah, that yeah, are people. flying in planes momentarily are just, they're coming. <laughs> <It was, laughs> Where do they land? I know. That's what I was thinking. I was like, <laughs> imagine you're flying a plane and that happens and you think you're fine, but then you have nowhere to land. You right? look down you're like, mm. oh shit. If, yeah. if everybody, if you look out to the right window, uh, you can yeah. see the impact from the asteroid <laughs> that completely annihilated. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what you do. I just watched height. a movie on that, in fact. I can't remember the name of it. There was a movie I just rented where there was something like that. Deep and, impact. No, it wasn't. Okay. No. I'm just coming Remember when we went on a kick for a minute there? There was like everything was like the end of the earth or end of the world. Uh, yeah, type it of, was all asteroid movies. Yeah, yeah. What was the one with uh, the- Armageddon. There you and there go. Was yeah, yeah, deep impact. Yeah, they never was, get it right, do they? Yeah. yeah. The, on that one, then they land like a, a spaceship on it. And then they drilled a nuke into it. Yeah. yeah. You know what a bad idea that would be? Oh, uh, yeah. Like, oh, instead of one oh, so, asteroid hitting yeah. us, we've just- We're going to make we've, many. We've turned just it into a everywhere. million bullets that are going to blast us. <laughs> just, just pelt us <laughs> like a machine gun. To the planet. Is that, oh, I thought that was a good idea yeah. originally. Hey, did you guys hear about there's this kid in the UK that got, uh, I guess he got suspended or expelled from school hmm. because he held a rave in the bathroom. Did you guys hear about this kid? <laughs> How do you hold a rave in the bathroom? Someone sent like me this, this article. He brought like his DJ equipment and like all the kids gathered in there. What? <laughs> he had a rave. Dude, he got kicked. If that was my kid, I'd be a little proud, wouldn't you? Uh, hey, Dad, yeah, I got suspended. So Why? Entrepreneur. I, I created a rave. Did you charge at the door? Yeah, I did. Yeah, no, yeah. if you made money You're not grounded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's no grounding going on here. You're totally fine. Dude, that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. I know. I love, I love reading that weird, uh, that weird news kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Where, people always ask where you get your stuff. Like, what do you, do you have like a like a systematic approach to what you read in the morning is it the same places that you're going or what? you know what if you go to okay so sciencedaily.com has just they just blast uh reports of studies left and right and you can yeah. actually go on there and they have sections so i can look up men's health women's health i can look up economics space you know fitness whatever fat loss and then they'll show you all the latest yeah. studies. It's funny. I usually get mine from all these UK sources. For what do you some mean? Reason. Uh, like Mirror or like just like, you know, different articles that come up. They're usually like in Australia or like in England or something like that. And I always like find some funny stories from there. Like that one, the bodybuilder guy. Remember that guy we talked about who like married his sex doll? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So what's the update so they, on him? Hold yeah, on. They so were, apparently hold on. they got married. They right? were dating first. They were dating first. And then things then, accelerated. Then they got married. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. And then. Basically, she's what, having a baby. No, she she <laughs> broke, 
like she broke and had to go get fixed and he was all depressed and all this stuff like because yeah one of her parts like broke off or something yeah and so now he's just uh apparently uh you know he's he's waiting he's he, he has no uh you know no backup in crime right no now. backup yeah, no, there's no backup there's, parts there's no investigation into domestic abuse yeah exactly like how <laughs> rough was he getting how exactly that? did she break i don't know that's a good question it's kind of weird yeah. you know wow it broke and so he's depressed <laughs> You know what's weird about that story to me is that he dated her and then got married. Yeah. You well, know what I'm saying? Yeah, and gallivanted her around town uh, with, with you know, his friends. Like, why are you going to pull your friends into this I weird mean, weirdness? Yeah. You know, it just goes to show you how <clears throat> weird yeah. and twisted yeah, it was. Yeah, it was like normal to him. Justin, I meant to ask you, did you, have you, I know you, for Christmas, your wife got you a Traeger. Have you fired yours up yet? I finally got it uh, operable. So, yeah. <laughs> was, it, was it hard to build or what? No, no, no. I just didn't have time. You say Taylor and I did it. I feel like you oh, should please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did it in two seconds. But okay. yeah, it was like <laughs> over the weekend, I was like just, uh, there were so many boxes of things. Uh, I had to actually assemble this crazy, huge, like way too big of a trampoline in my backyard. So what happened was uh, it was supposed to be like the same size as the other one that we had. It's just the, the, the boys use the trampoline like every day, dude. The thing is like a godsend, you know, to get them outside and like active and stuff. And it just got holes in it. It was all, you know, tore up and everything. And so I had to like move this thing all the way across my side of the property. And then I was assembling this new one. And it was so massive. I'm like, oh my god, I have to like basically cut into the side of the hill just to make room for this stupid thing. So did oh. you? Yeah, yeah. So I had to what cut. Are you just shoveling it? Shoveled all weekend. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, shoveled like. That's why you're getting lean. Just yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was active. I was doing a lot of hard yeah. work. I'm not shoveling anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, assembling stuff. You know, you know, basically just like all the ramifications of Christmas. I'm always assembling shit does for it, at least another month. Does it have the sides on it so the kids can't like bounce off and fly off? To oh the, yeah, it's okay. got yeah. It's it, this one's cool too. It's got a basketball hoop and everything all in what? there, and so they got we're gonna have dunk competitions. You know, you guys can bring your kids, dude. Let's do this. Oh, um, <laughs> Adam's like my boy's coming. For oh me. yeah, yeah. Dude. Uh, hey, the last like two weeks. So <laughs> the other day, is he getting all sport? Is he's like into the sport it's now? now happening right? So this this whole time uh i've been waiting right i've been patiently waiting. yeah patiently waiting like trying to be like you know a good dad who doesn't like force it down his throat and he's now like he's drawn to the ball sal and jessica got him like a like a one of those fisher price like t-ball thing. yeah t-ball things so uh, little t-ball stand. yeah yeah nice. so between the the t-ball and the basketball in the living room like we're we're starting to figure all that out like you know basketball is being played does he know does he going up and actually swinging the bat to try to so he it? uh he yeah he's not like proper he's not like of course yeah he's not like right. he'll he'll go up and like hit the ball so he gets that you know but, but he gets the idea to hit the ball oh yeah yeah, oh, yeah. and, and I'll, when he comes up I, I get his hands right and we practice right and left handed right so we're going to be able to be able to go switch oh, hitter switch you know what I'm saying so <laughs> yeah, yeah. so we do that stuff right now so we're working on it yeah no I, I, I'm pretty excited because uh, up until this point it, we were completely drawn to music and the guitar and that's like all his his complete interest was around that and it was not around any sort of balls or anything like that but he he was so young like he's I, i'd say it's only been three months maybe that he you know plays on his own and like actually like actually plays not like just sitting in front of something right like mm -hmm. he's playing you know pretending to drive the truck like he's at that age right now where that that stuff is starting to to make sense you know it's a really cool thing i'm going to share this with you guys and so you'll you'll get to do this soon again um so I, I and, and I don't and I don't know if there's any. I love this. What I love about our audience. I'll say something and then hopefully somebody will will school me on this. Right. So um, we have a this this massive rotation of of books that he goes through, and we typically read about five before he goes to bed. And I'll stick with those five for I don't know about a month or so, and then I rotate the next five. And we've done this since the day he was born. Right. We we'll always read to him, and there's this this rotation of you know five new books every single you know every single week or month or whatever right so what i've started to do though is to bring back ones that he hasn't seen for like three months mm. and you can see he makes the connection it's super wild right so we'll be reading a book like uh so i just brought back bear wants more so bear wants more was about three months ago we were reading consistently it it came off the list and we were reading other stuff and what I noticed is anytime I reintroduce something that I read to him consistently before, you see the connection made and he like lights up and he sits up and then he's totally more attentive to that book oh, than the, cool. the other one. So, 
And I don't know if that's a like a, a good thing for me to constantly challenge that or not, but I have definitely made this connection that whenever I, I, I do something consistently, I take it away for a little bit, then I reintroduce it. You can see his, his brain piecing it together like he recognizes oh, it and he's into it. Yeah, really interesting to me. That's so, awesome. Yeah. We got this, uh, this like, it's like this thing that we lay Aurelius on, on his stomach. We so have the same one I saw Jessica did you see post it? it. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's filled with water mm -hmm. and there's like little like fake fish in there. He loved that thing. And what you do is you put them on top of it and then they, you know, they practice their, what do they call it, tummy, tummy time to strengthen mm -hmm. their neck and stuff. And so he's all like super fascinated with the little water and the fish or whatever. Yeah. You just hang out there for 10 minutes and have a good time. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm strengthening different ranges of motion with him. So I'll like move to one side. So he turns his head that way and then I'll move to the other side. i be like, your dad's a trainer. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> I'm going to get you. To I'm over here. I'm, I'm over, over here. there. <laughs> that's how, here. I, I'm down that's here. how I was with, with crawling and kind of pushing that. That was like one of those areas of contention for Katrina. And I remember telling you guys that. I was constantly wanting to push him. Like the trainer in me was like, "No, no, no, let's let's make him work. Like it's okay if he cries a little." <laughs> Tie bit. one arm behind his back. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> you know how Jessica will be with that? Do you know? I, I mean, obviously you're not there yet. Oh, she's really good. Yeah. Yeah, she's really good about that kind. She'll of be stuff. like, "All right, let him cry, let him do his thing." Um, no, okay. not the crying. Oh, I was gonna say that's no, 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 that's no, no, the no. hard part. See, no, 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 no. We'll go on walks, and you know what? What babies do sometimes is right before they fall asleep, it's like it's tough for their bot for them to transition from, like, to sleep. You can tell them fight it. They they fight it a little bit, right? So I'll go for a walk with him, and he'll he'll start to cry. It's not like a full on cry. He's like he'll cry, and then he'll stop, and then he'll, cranky. Uh, yeah, and you can tell he's it's like his he's he's transitioning to sleep. She can't. She hears him cry a little bit. I want to get him. Can I get him? Let me get him. I'm like, hold on, hold on. He's not crying, uh, you know, 100 percent yet. And you could tell she gets antsy. So I don't know. I don't think she'll do. She'll now, be okay with him crying like that. Now, is he, he's, I would imagine he's still in the bed and like the doc -tot thing with you guys, right? You guys aren't putting him in the crib yet, are you? No, he's doing, we're doing both. So she's doing this nighttime routine with him, trying to get him used to sleeping on his own. Oh, okay. But then he often ends up in the bed. Of course. With both of us. Of course. Because she's got to feed him every couple hours. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah no, that's, I mean, I think for the first, I want to say at least six to eight months, I mean, he pretty much would come to bed. Dude, and, and, and I, by the way, every time I talk about this stuff, Katrina, when I get home, like corrects me. Mm -hmm. That is not how many months we did it for. It was yeah. Three. It was four. It was six. I'm always wrong. I'm never right. So for That's anyone why I don't chime in, right? Anyone who's listening right now, everything that I say, yeah. it's like it's round that or so. It's, it's, it's yeah. Because I get checked every time I come home. And it's that, not. Well, That's that, a nighttime routine, right? Yeah. All right. What, what am I wrong about? Sure, wrong. What was I wrong about yeah. today? No, it's. Uh, you know, it's funny too. He does this thing. It cracks me up. He'll push. <laughs> he'll push Jessica to her limits with sleep, and she'll be so frustrated, and she's changing his diaper for the whatever time, and. You know, it's like four o'clock in the morning and then he'll like cry, cry, cry. And then he'll look at her and he'll smile as if to be like, eh, yeah, you got a little more. And then yeah. she'll laugh a little bit. And I'm like, man, he is playing you so good. So great. Already starting to happen. You know, so great. speaking of, uh, uh, of, of women, have you guys, you guys didn't get your hand on the, the Organifi. What's it called, Doug? The, the new women's supplement. I believe it's balance. Balance. Or harmony. 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 Oh, yes, Thank sir. you. Well, they, have they have both, right? Both of them are. Yeah, but harmony is the one I'm talking about. Uh, so the pro the ingredients in harmony, you know that they're proven to increase, improve libido what? in women. For women? Uh, yeah. What is it? So there's maca. I it was for PMS. It, well, it does. It's supposed to balance out. Chasberry and maca is in there and a few other things. But the maca in women uh, will can't, has been shown to boost libido and i don't know a better way to, to say this but lubrication Ooh. i guess is the, the, the right way to say it is that what they say feels Th naughty. that's the main ingredient so that's the first ingredient in their blend is is maca um and it's supposed to balance out hormones reduce symptoms of pms and hormone imbalances so chasberries in there shatavari's in there of course ginger turmeric uh which are both uh, phenomenal hmm. but maca's uh, libido booster now is that in women. is it only for women and not men interesting a guy could take that but i don't know i know maca in men uh also does that also boosts libido but the chasberry usually that's for, usually for women i feel like justin's been sprinkling this in courtney's coffee for um, months now uh, for years <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's acting surprised that's weird i didn't know yeah, that. Yeah. i didn't, I didn't know, know those traits yeah, i've been on google for a long time was it just the two of you up in sanctuary? 
Just yeah. A, uh, well, yeah, and oh. the dogs. We brought the dogs with us. Mm. It was kind of a last, the last minute idea, but yeah, it was awesome, dude. It was like much needed time, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for us by ourselves. So you were glowing when you came in this morning. <laughs> I am glowing, <laughs> <laughs> radiant. You had a good time. All yeah. Very energetic. Yeah. <laughs> you need to go more days than just one though. Next time. I know, dude. I, I actually was slapping myself because I just wanted to stay there. But yeah, we had. Uh, Did you have to pick the kids up the next day? Well, that's the thing. Uh, you know, yeah. you you gotta like you gotta you know make uh, some equity there so the, so the parents will take the kids and you know all that so i'm going to build up for a good 3 day weekend you know that's my goal yeah, next yes, <laughs> yes you need to because here's what happens when you go hang out with your wife and without the kids for one day you inevitably stay up super late you have a good time yeah it's like you can sleep in the day after when you got to be with the kids no. you know so you got to have 3 days so that the last day you at least you can get your your bearings back mm -hmm. otherwise i've done that mistake you ever done that mistake where you go out you stay up late all night, and then the next day you gotta wake up early with the kids. And you're just like, "This is not. That was not now, a vacation." So, are you getting any? It's my MO because you're you're on two month right now, yeah. right? We're at two yeah. months. Okay, it's still a little early, I guess. Uh, I'm curious to the feeling that you get because I got. I, I think it was around like three or four months when I really started to get like cabin fever. Now, are you pretty much locked down and staying home with the baby and Jessica on the weekends and everything? Or? Yeah, but remember, we're doing this in the middle of everything being closed anyway. Because out here, it's like, where am I going right, to go? Right, right. Mm -hmm. So I, I was already cabin fever, uh, okay. you know, going into it. So what else? Yeah, I just felt like I, I got so tired of like the television and like that's all I felt like I could do. I was like laying around the house all day long with them and like sleeping on my chest yeah. watching sports. You know, we did this weekend. We totally mis did a little miscalculation. We, we decided to go on a walk to the mall with my older kids and the baby and, you know, Jessica's like, well, I'm like, that's kind of long. We're going to go on the walk. And then when we're there, what if, you know, you're going to need to feed the baby. And she's like, oh, they have the family area at the mall that I can go in and then feed the baby if I need to, whatever. Well, the family area is closed. Yeah, so everything's we, closed. So there. we get there. We do our shopping. Baby starts crying. Oh, time to feed him. She walks over there and it's closed. So we got nowhere to go. I'm like, oh, shit, we got to go home. We got to walk home yeah. before whatever. So I, the only way I could calm him down was to kind of carry him and hold him and the whole way home, dude. It oh, was, yeah. Yes. Thanks. Now, where's Jessica with the uh, boob in public thing? Like, Because uh, Katrina was way more comfortable with that than I thought she would be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jessica don't care, dude. Oh, okay. She, 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 I mean, she's not like whipping it out, but she was... She'll feed them wherever. Yeah, and, like a know, restaurant, kind of, whatever. Kind matter. of cover up a little oh, okay. bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, in 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 Europe, well, at least when I was a kid, women didn't they didn't care. They would do it right in front of anybody. Yeah, no. and I think it should be that way. I don't know. It I feel like it's, that way, yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Obviously, it doesn't bother me whatsoever. And I just I feel like some some women are more apt to do it, others are not. And that's mm -hmm. why I'm curious if Jessica's like that. I know. Katr I was surprised. Katrina and I never. And I, we never had a conversation about it until it actually came to a day where like. Well, we you can kind of hide it pretty mm -hmm. easily. Oh yeah, right? totally. She had the you know she'd always have that blanket that he'd be wrapped in, and then that would go over her shoulder. She actually bought these shirts yeah. that. Um, have like a, you can open them. They look they look like normal shirts, but there's oh. a way you could open them and then you could pull out your. That's what I meant to ask you last time, and I, I've got so many DMs about this, and I keep forgetting to ask Katrina. Do you remember the names of the apps that we use to? Oh no, oh, of course, no, you asked the wrong guy. I know you and I are worthless. Yeah, I got we brought it up on the show, and I must have got a hundred DMs mm -hmm. about like, hey, heard you talking about this. Would love to know what app that show is like the next leap or whatever. Uh, yeah, the stages of development. Yeah, there was a couple of them that we used to use, and mm. Katrina loves them. I loved them. I thought they were really interesting. We still use it. We still follow it right now because you can always tell when he's going through something and then it makes you kind of, it makes you feel good about like what might be happening. Like all of a sudden you notice your your baby is, you know, crying a lot more than what they were just the two weeks it's ago. Like a, it's like it's like it's a little painful or something for him. Yeah. For sure. Like yeah. he'll get crankier, won't sleep as well, mm -hmm. eating way more, and mm -hmm. then boom, he's like way more alert or he'll notice movement differently or whatever. Like right now he's starting to like figure out that his hands, he can like do things with his hands. So mm -hmm. he'll like reach out and like grab. When he's breastfeeding, he's hilarious. While he's breastfeeding, he like reaches up and he like slaps Jessica's face. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> eating. It's just, I'm, I'm cracking like, up. This is fun. Yeah, he's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, while he's doing it, it's no, hilarious. hilarious. First question is from Nads7719. <laughs> Just to get help it. <laughs> I'm boys. sorry, dude. Hi, we're, we're 12. I know. Yes. I know. I am. What tips or advice do you have for deadlifting with dumbbells instead of barbells? All right. Um, so there's two ways you could do this uh, with dumbbells. One is you could hold them to your, uh, at your sides. So it's more of a, it's kind of like a trap bar deadlift. And you go all the way from the ground up. So very deep deadlift. Now, this is going to be a much longer range of motion than a traditional uh, deadlift. The second 
uh, way you could do this is by placing the dumbbells on something that is going to simulate the height of a trap bar or of a barbell and then do them from there. And that's going to be a little closer to a barbell deadlift than the one where you go all the way to the ground. But I will say this. There's value to going with a much fuller range of motion. Definitely can't go as heavy, mm -hmm. but because of the deeper range of motion, um, I have found this to work on sticking points for me for my barbell deadlifts. So I don't necessarily think you should mimic the barbell or no. try to mimic it as much as possible. No, no, yeah, it's, it's totally different. different. I, lo I love this, and I love to do it single leg. So mm -hmm. if you go back oh, that's best, yeah. far enough on my Instagram, there was I think it was last year the year before, um, I was on when I was in the, my mobility kick and I was trying to progress my single leg deadlift. Um, and man, the, the carryover that I saw from that into my, my regular deadlift, uh, the hip mobility and stability and strength from it was great. Like, I just think it's a, one of those exercises that is overlooked and not a lot of people program it. So tremendous value. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think getting good at a single deadlift, single leg deadlift off the floor with dumbbells and and slowly try and and you'll have to start light. I mean, a lot a lot of people uh, may even have to do no weight at first. You know, just yeah. touching the ground it will be challenging for a lot of people. Just the stability, and then slowly progress uh, yeah. in weight. Mm -hmm. I love both those. I I do like to to do deficit deadlifts with just because it allows for that you know that that opportunity to go pretty low. Um, you know, with the weight. Uh, one other way that I like to use them, especially with kettlebells, but dumbbells, you could do this as well. Is um, just having it more midline, so it's it's more with a a, a sumo stance, um, but uh, pulling you know from you know organizing it so all the weight there is in the midline of your body has a really good feel to it with dumbbells or with heavy kettlebells as well. Yeah, you could also do uh, a version where it's a, like a suitcase uh, type deadlift where you're holding one side, so I'm oh, right. I'm going down. And rather than grabbing two dumbbells, I'm deadlifting one dumbbell, and that one dumbbell is on my side. And that really does work the your yeah. lateral strength. It works, stabilizes the opposite side with your, your core, your obliques, your your QL. If you find that when you do heavy deadlifts, you're, you tend to get a little tweak in your low back on one side, then uh, doing lifts like this might actually help. It might actually balance you out because what might be happening is one side QL muscle, quadratus lumborum muscle, might not be as strong as the other, or there's some kind of a asymmetric uh, asymmetric uh, shift, or something's going on there. Sometimes doing these like one sided deadlifts and kind of getting good at them helps balance you. Very out. functional. I mean, think about that when you pick up weight. A lot of times you are going to load it on one side, uh, you know, unless you're carrying it in on your chest uh, in front. But a lot of times you'll be carrying something heavy on your side. So it's a great exercise to to emulate. Next question is from Jules Thielman. What are your thoughts on the 75 hard challenge? Are all or nothing fitness challenges healthy or are they problematic? Okay, are you guys familiar with this? Yes, yes, I am. Okay, very familiar I'm with not. It. So yeah, I, I wasn't, but I looked it up. So maybe Adam, you could, you could. So I looked it up, and this is what yeah, I, I read. It's uh, uh, Andy Versella's thing, man. It's the it's the first form CEO's uh, thing, and he's you know I I talk about it every year. This is like the I think it's his third year in a row doing it, and. Mm. I've been talking shit about it since the first year, and it's just uh, I'm not a fan of any of them. I just think that it, it per, it's the opposite message that I think we try and communicate uh, on the show. And uh, does it is it great for some people? Maybe I mean, yeah, if it if it works to get you fired up and motivated and and uh, get you to kick back into uh, your fitness routine, then okay, maybe maybe it works for you, but. In my experience, uh, most people, it just promotes the on and off the wagon thing. Uh, go, I mean, because it's exactly the opposite of how we tell people. We are, I come from the camp of do as little as possible to elicit the most amount of change, set small goals, and start to get wins and build upon that and build that momentum versus 75 days hard, you know, all or nothing type of deal where you're committed every single day to this intense type of a routine. Um, not a fan of that. I'm just not a fan uh, of that message. Now, again, if it, there's, I'm sure, plenty of people out there that loved it and it worked for them, and so be it. I'm just coming from the perspective of a 
personal trainer who's trained lots of normal ass long term sustainability. Yeah, and and that's yeah. What, how do you define it worked for them? Right, like right. Do, do you find it define it by they lost the twenty pounds and then they gained it back? Right. Did this because, change all your lifestyle habits? Yeah, because statistically speaking, um, people do lose weight on diets and on things like this, but also statistically speaking. They gain it all back and go back to where they were before afterwards. Something like 90% yeah. of people. So I had to look it up because I hadn't heard of it. But I mean, you know, one of the things about it is you work out twice a day for at least 45 minutes. And one of those workout sessions must be outdoors. You have to drink four liters of water every single day. You have to take a five minute cold shower. Um, you have to take progress pictures every day. You have to perform, uh, this is a weird part of it, uh, other unrelated tasks and random acts of kindness. I think you just threw that in there to sound. You know, kind of like it's uh, you're, you're you're being a better person type of deal. Here's the problem with it. Okay, are there people that uh, this would be inappropriate for? Well, yeah, I'm not working out. Oh, I'm going to do this thing now. I'll work out twice a day. Yeah, terrible. You know, idea. every single day, or you know, drink. I I, see, I can see where he's coming from. A lot of these things would be good practices if they're yeah. appropriate. But you're going to take if you take the average person not doing any of this and they jump into it, the odds that it's going to give them long term success are almost zero. Well, it's just it's just another one of those things where somebody else is kind of dictating your, uh, you, you know, like basically like giving you an entire prescription of everything. This is how you have to do everything um, from now on. You never like internalize that. You never really yeah. own that. You're just you're just riding whatever momentum you can to to feel like you're achieving what's set out in front of you. But that's placed in front of you. You're not actually the one that's uh, determining what you're doing with your life. Look, when I first became a trainer, and this is very common among new trainers, when I first became a trainer, I thought to myself, if people just did what I said, then I would win and they would succeed and it'd be great. And so when people came to see me, what I would do is I would just give them what needs to happen. All right, you're going to hire me, you're going to work with me three days a week. You're going to go walking on these days or do cardio on these days. Here's your meal plan. Go shopping. Buy these foods, eat this meal plan, eat these calories, proteins, and fats, and you will get to your goals. But after about a few years of doing that um, and really wanting people to have long-term success, I was honest and I looked back and said, I failed. This totally yeah. doesn't work. Here's the, here, I'll, 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 take, I'll make it even more close to home, okay? We sell workout programs. By the way, it's easy to design a workout program and tell people to do this. I would not be selling workout programs if I didn't have a podcast. And I don't mean because the podcast sells the programs, but rather if I didn't have a way to communicate how this works and how to stay with it long-term and the practices associated with long-term success, selling programs on their own, I would feel like I would be doing people uh, a disservice because it just doesn't work that way to just take something, follow it. If you don't figure out how to change behaviors and, and the process is a slow process, it just is. If you don't figure that out, it's not going to work for you. So 75-day hard challenge, if you follow it, will you see some results? Yeah, you will. Uh, will you be able to maintain long-term success? No. I bet money on it. You know, Nine out of 10 times, uh, people would follow something like that and eventually will fail. Yeah, who's working out twice a day, dude? Yeah. I mean, come on. This There's unreasonable. A, a very small percentage of the population that will ever maintain that. And then mm -hmm. if, you, if you did it for 75 days and then you stop doing it after that, what's going to happen? So... Yeah, not a fan uh, of it. Uh, love a lot of the content that Andy puts out. I think he puts out some pretty cool stuff, and I'm into cool cars too. He's got bulldogs, so I like the dude. Um, but you know, stay in your lane. I just don't think that when it comes to like fitness stuff, this is that's not the message that should be promoted. Yet it's perpetuated in our space because it is popular and it is trendy, and uh, we avoid it for a reason. Next question is from Brian Pata. What are some good starter? exercises to become more explosive and agile is going lighter on compounds focusing on speed a good place to start um going lighter on compound and, and lifting faster uh, is a great is a good way to build explosive power but not a great place to start i mm -hmm. mean start with something even more because explosive movements are uh, the skill level to perform them with lower risk of injury is very high explosive movements are the most uh need require the most skill of all exercise, all exercise. It just require a lot of skill. Mm -hmm. So start real basic. Um, jump in place. Yeah, I mean, say your body weight is it's a great place to start. It just, yeah, it's basically everything you've been doing, but now we got to add acceleration. We got to add speed. Uh, you know, elements there to 
But so everything you've done in terms of stability and mobility, things to really prepare your joints for this is crucial. But um, yeah, now body weight is the perfect place to start with lunge jumps, you know, squat jumps, uh, you know, explosive type push ups, things like that that are real basic, but like really trying to like move your body quickly and under control and be able to, uh, you know, you know, slow yourself down as well as another vital component to, to, to move and fast. Yeah, one way I would apply this to people initially, um, would be, I'd have people hold on to something stable and I'd have them stand on uh, a pad, so something with some give on it. I'd have them take their shoes off, and then I'd, sit, I'd tell them to jump in place. Not like bounce over and over again, but rather just jump once, get your stability, hold on to something for balance, and then do it again. And then from there, it's easy to progress, right? Then we go from that to doing it without holding on to something to doing it on a hard surface, then to doing it to jumping on something. Yeah. But that's... A, yeah. a great place to start, in my and opinion. then like uh, you know, for, in terms of starting to add load and things like that. Like I really do like medicine balls for this, and I like slam balls, things like that, where you can actually, you know, just push and, and press and accelerate something that seems like it's pretty natural for you to to throw something into the wall or throw something into the ground uh, and get speed. It's about organizing your entire body to move with it and move quickly. So uh, you know, before we really start getting into then you know complicated. Olympic lifts where you got to use the barbell to move the barbell in a certain uh, linear path. It's really hard to do to organize your body. Check out uh, this kid, Alex. Uh, his Instagram page is Real Game Period Athletics. Oh, he's awesome. Um, I've been actually trying to uh, track him down and get him on the YouTube channel to actually create some content uh, around this exact question because I think most of his page is like literally dedicated to this, mm -hmm. and I think it's a it's a great place to start. Most all of it is all body weight. Uh, movements, but I I love the way he teaches guys like incredible uh, mechanics, super too. smooth too. Oh, like, yeah. It makes it look effortless, and I, that's really the goal of this is to you know uh, be able to to stop in a really smooth and organized way and have a, like a lot of control with this as well. Next question is from Frines Tamamos. How can you tell the difference between hip and foot instability? That's a good question. You know what's funny about foot and hip instability? They usually go along together. I was going to say. Yeah, it's pretty rare you'll find one and not an issue with the other. I mean, if you're, right. if whichever one has the problem, the other one starts to compensate. So, in my experience, uh, I'd say probably nine out of 10 times, if you see instability in the foot, there's going to be some issues with the hip um, and vice versa. Although it's usually the foot that leads to the hip and not the other way around. I, I didn't believe this before. This isn't something that I used to think before until. Years ago, we put together Maps Prime Pro with our friend, uh, Dr. Justin Brink. And when he highlighted just the instability of my own ankle and foot, and I said, oh my gosh, this is totally true. And the fact that we wear shoes as soon as we can walk and our, foos, our shoes excuse me, stabilize everything for us and how weak our feet and ankles uh, tend to become, um, I really realized that that's probably the root of a lot of people's uh, hip instability. Well, and this is, mm -hmm. uh, again, a shameless plug on the Prime Pro program, but this is why we created this. Is It's uh, It's got seven of the major joints, uh, and there's a test that comes with it. And so the idea is that you go through each one of those tests and uh, test your range of motion and stability in that joint. And if you fail, uh, there that's an area that you should be working on. And I would, I'm willing to bet that if you fail the – ankle foot one, you're probably going to fail the hip one, or there's going to be work to be done on, on both. So, uh, but that was the motivation behind that was this is very, very common and there, there is ways to test it and see, and, you know, test them both out and, and see what you find out. But like Sal's alluding to it's, I think almost every time I've seen an issue in somebody's foot, there's also work to be done in the hips, but uh, go through Prime Pro, and if you if you don't have Prime Pro and you're wanting to know what I'm talking about, I mean Justin did a great, or excuse me, I did the Prime Pro webinar. Justin did the Prime one, uh, did one on uh, PrimeProWebinar.com. It's totally free, uh, and I go through most of the joints. I don't go through all of them, but I go through most of them, giving you an idea uh, of what you're working on and what it would look like, uh, especially for the hips that's in there. Mm. Uh, check that out. Now, side note: uh, if you find that you have instability issues and you want to work on them. Take your time. It's a slow process. Don't do anything super intense because the harder you go, the more likely you are to revert back to your bad movement pattern. So start slow and practice very often and frequently. You don't necessarily need to do long stability workouts, 15, 20 minutes 
every single day will get your body to start to progress. Um, but once you start to progress, pace yourself because it, it, you know, I've done this to myself where I start to notice more stability and then I immediately want to go up and wait with mm -hmm. my lifts uh, because now I can lift more and then, oh, I hurt myself, you know, type of deal. So take your time. Um, uh, but once you get to the point where they start to feel stable, it's pretty awesome. You start to notice just how much stronger you are when you have stability in those areas. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come find us on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on social media. We're all on Instagram, so you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Doug at Mind Pump Doug. We have this very minimal base of movement quality, yet we try to add so much strength and performance on top of that. And I think when you can rearrange those and put the squat back into perspective as a movement first – because in order to squat with great movement, you have to have good foot stability, good ankle mobility, great hip mobility.